Today, we're focused on the section nutrition, and this is your introduction to the section. Let's start with some background. Americans make an average of 219 food decisions a day. This is because they don't have a plan. They wake up in the morning and it's a question, where am I going to have breakfast? It's a question whether I'm going to have a snack before lunch, what that snack will be, where it will be. It's a question what I'm going to order in or eat out or go where I'm going to go for lunch. It's a question whether or not I'm going to eat again before dinner, whether there's something in the break room, whether I have an urge to buy something on the way home. It's a question what time and whether I'm going to eat and what I'm going to eat for dinner, whether I'm going to order in or whether there's going to be something in the fridge. It's a question if I'm going to eat again after dinner, whether I'm feeling in a good mood or a bad mood or bored, all good reasons to eat. So the point is that all of these decisions are based on lack of structure and a plan going into the day. In this section, I'm going to be talking to you about nutrition. There's going to be seven recommendations of foods to eat and very specific amounts based on the literature, like three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and very specific limitations on foods to avoid, like not more than two servings of red meat to three ounce servings of red meat per week. If you are going through the day shooting from the hip, kind of uh, without a plan, and you're trying to keep track of 10 different foods and the amounts you've eaten each day or eat, and over the week, you're setting yourself up for an impossible task. So my number one recommendation in approaching the nutrition section is to come away with a plan, an overall structure of your eating for the day, which carries over to the week, which allows you to buy produce and groceries for the week. Without that structure in place, with the constant on-the-fly decision-making, it's going to be very hard to make progress in optimizing your nutrition. And the theory that I'm using for this recommendation to structure your environment so that you have a plan comes from the book Nudge. In it, Cass Sunstein and Richard Thaler talk about choice architecture. It's not so much what you choose in a given moment. It's what your environment nudges you to choose, what your environment encourages you to choose. If you decide after a long day at work, when you were under a lot of stress to make deadlines, you got into a fight with your boss, you uh, got home and got into a fight with your kids and got into a fight with your uh, wife or husband and and then you, you open the fridge, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're frustrated, you're angry and there's nothing in the fridge and if at that point you're deciding you're going to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables today, you've already missed the boat. You'll probably dial up or order in on the newest app uh, the fastest, highest calorie comfort food you can possibly find. The point is not the specific choice you make at any given moment, but how you design your environment so that you don't have to choose, so that the default option in is otherwise promoting you to be healthy. So if you open that fridge and you've got a plate of vegetables and you've got some plant-based protein or seafood in the freezer, and you're thinking, boy, if I order in, I'm gonna throw out those vegetables at the end of the week, then you've got an environment that's setting you up to be healthy as opposed to one that's chaotic and is making it hard to make multiple right decisions throughout the day. So overall, the approach I'm talking about is take back the kitchen, and we'll go into that further right now.